So we have to listen to Brand X. Yes. We're right here. We're getting ready to go live. Here's a community update with Mayor Sheldon Neely. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning, good morning, Sister D. And I want to welcome all the listeners of LT. You know, today is a fine morning. If you're a part of it, we got to just wake up. Uh, uh, my great friend John Daly says, first thing you do is uh, thank God and then take inventory of what hurts and what does not hurt. But that's only specific to certain age brackets. And with us today, we have uh, transitioning into that. I got to say my friend, uh, Dr. Reynolds is with us, Dr. Furholden. Our transportation director, John Daly, and our great police chief, uh, Chief Terrence Green. And also to deliver the prayer this morning for us is Pastor Pettigrew uh, is here with us today. And, and we want to welcome you in, Pastor Pettigrew, because we know that your family, like my family, like many families, uh, we have to go through certain things uh, with life. You have loss. And I know with your, your father-in-law, we want to make sure we send our condolences to you and your, your lovely wife and your family. And you're back. And, and thank you so much for joining us, Dave. If you'd be so kind just to guide us into prayer. God bless everyone. Kind Father, we want to say thank you. We know without you, we can't do anything. We ask you to bless this radio show. Bless all those that have taken part. Bless their families. Let everyone know that you're the head, you're the author and finisher of everything we do. As the show is progress today, Father, I pray, Father, you give the words as need be to assist the community. We're going to always be mindful to say thank you for everything. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Amen, Pastor Pettigrew. And, and go ahead and tell the listeners, uh, you know, your church and what time is fellowship. And if you're actually back in operation, uh, uh, where they can join you at? If any of you decide to travel down 2115 West Coldwater Road, you will see a church that belongs to the Lord, St. Paul Baptist Church, where we say that every visitor is an honor guest. Come by to see us. Sunday school starts at 925. We go on Facebook at 1045. We are there for no more than an hour. We just like for everyone to come and fellowship with us and to God be the glory in everything that we do. Thank you, babe. And thank you. And, you know, one of the things, Pastor Pettigrew, on that corridor where you are, you know, I would I, one day I counted on that corridor. It's about 19 churches right there uh, on that corridor in the city of Flint. When we check what our assessments, we're, we're down to about maybe 411 churches, uh, registered churches, uh, nonprofit entities, ecclesiastic organizations inside the city of Flint. 411. And but we got about 371 of those are 72 that are registered that are African-American churches. And we, we look at that and we say that uh, if society's truly the church's report card, you know, we have some work to do, especially in the communities like Flint. And when, when we look at, at the ways that we have to finance a community, and we're going to have a big, robust dialogue about that next week, about how generally we are financed in our community. But generally, we finance through our property taxes. And so when you have an ecclesiastic organization, a 501c3 entity that does we have a lot of space that does not generate revenue for the city. We have our winter and summer taxes inside the city of Flint. And so when you take off schools, hospitals, uh, churches, you know, it's a lot of land space that we do not generate uh, taxes from. Uh, the municipality is funded through our tax base there as well as our, our school district. And so it's a complex thing as we engage this budget cycle. Uh, two things that we have in front of us, we have a structural deficit, a structural deficit deficit yes. inside the city of Flint that people don't like to talk about too much. And it's been a structural deficit because we know when the, the analysts, the accountants, uh, the actuaries project these things out, these things have been projected out for some time now because we have been thoroughly um, confused, frustrated uh, in our city that we don't look at those things. And when I say for years, they've been looking at our structural deficit, meaning that we spend more money than we take in. Uh, and through our pension system, right now, our pension system is 
fund with some of our structural deficit because we can't overcome the payments that we have going out to pay for our retirees and others uh, that has uh, parted from the city uh, and from our revenues that we have coming in. Our obligations were, when I came into office, it was about $21 million. By the time that we've, uh, 2024 and now, we're paying about $32 million, which is an increase of $11 million. And next year in 2024 will be another increase of another $10 million. And that is the thing that has burdened the city so much with our structural deficit and to keep operations uh, moving. I'm so proud to say that I've been able to operate and move things around through our, our, our other audit type of activities, um, our internal audits and are moving things around that we have not had to, uh, the, to lay off any essential personnel in our fire, police, and other essential services. But, in, in, uh, but with all the help that we have internally, we're able to enhance the services because truly I'm a mayor that leads. We understand the process and our relationship uh, moving around with everybody. And that's what we've been able to do. Four months in, we had a, a health crisis, a pandemic, and then the priority became saving lives. And we're, we're not apologizing about saving lives. And, and we didn't spare uh, any resources to be going out for people. For the portion of 27 months, we didn't disconnect one water users through the advice of our health professionals, Dr. Reynolds, and we kept water on. Now we're going after the habitual uh, non-payers in the commercial sector. So what I want you people to do, if you know people in your churches or you know people that's neighbors and friends and they have not communicated with the city in over two years or a year, and they owe more than $4,000, $5,000, $10,000 bills, they have to pay because it's a burden on all of us, but we have to find structural ways to be able to finance everything that we have. Now, the gift of $94.7 million, only which of $47 million has arrived, this is one-time dollars, transformational dollars that we have. City of Flint, $94.7 million. The County of Genesee, $77 million. And remember, Flint is a part of Genesee County. One out of every five of those dollars belongs to the City of Flint, but we have to make sure we fight together. $114 million for the Flint School District. Transformational, but we have to work together. There have been people preaching down to hostility, fear, anger, malice, and greed uh, to continue to um, penalize this community. We need to come together as one Flint. One Flint. Uh, this is our transformational time to be able to come together or we all will lose together. Those that will keep us apart are, are truly our enemy. Those who will preach to your hate, malice, and division frustration and hostility. Those are the ones that's not for us. One Flint, one town. It's about vision and not vengeance. With that, Pastor Pettigrew, so with that, I gave you your sermon for tomorrow. Uh, don't worry, I, I, won't, I won't come by there and take claim to uh, how we need to preach tomorrow to residents because truly, if society is as a church's report card with more than 400 churches in the city, we need to be on one page. And if they're not preaching unity from the pulpit, I, I encourage you to seek places uh, where Psalms 133 and 1 uh, is really followed. Was that too much, Pastor? Bless you. You gave me a sermon and a half. I appreciate you. Okay. All right. Well, God bless. God bless. Dr. Reynolds, we're we're moving through a COVID uh, period of time. Uh, where are we now? Because people, I don't want people to lower their guards. Last week, you gave me uh, the advice about the mask mandate that we have inside the city of Flint. Um, do we need to continue with uh, cautionary measures to make sure we protect the lives and safety and welfare of people? What are we, where are we at with our, with our uh, advice, Dr. Uh, Dr. Reynolds? Yes, sir. I apologize for the wording, but I'll say it like it is. Uh, wearing a mask in public is in public is uh, always important. If you have someone in your household who is pregnant, who's thinking about getting pregnant, someone who's getting chemotherapy, who had an organ transplant, or who has any chronic disease. So you're wearing a mask not only to protect yourself, but yourself and those unvaccinated people or those people with compromising conditions. Uh, so I would wear a mask whenever I walk into City Hall or any public building because I need those people well to make sure I get water to fix the road, to protect us from fires and crime. And so we do this for the folks around us and that benefits us. So uh, as Pastor Pettigrew would probably say, 
The Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, these folks are our neighbors. And let's talk about vaccination. We can do better community increasing our vaccination, especially uh, among the 5 to 12 age group, only 13% have been vaccinated. 12 through 15, less than a third. And we can do better for our seniors too, because 62% of our seniors have been vaccinated. That means we have another 38% to go. And why I emphasize seniors is 83% of the deaths in Genesee County have been among seniors who are 60 and older. So if you love your aunt, uncle, grandparents, and yourself, get vaccinated. If you have symptoms, get tested. And take someone with you to get vaccinated, and if necessary, to get tested. And today, you can go to Saints of God Church on 2200 Forest Hill Avenue. Uh, if you have someone 12 and over for vaccination between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. All right. Well, thank you for that, because sometimes they think we're out of the woods. Uh, the numbers are going down, but we still have a responsibility to be able to get vaccinated, get boosted, wear our mask, continue to social distance and wash our hands. Dr. Furholden, uh, you know, sometimes they say that, you know, because we talk about information on this show and give good information to residents, it's not always sexy because, you know, it's, uh, it's not. Uh, filled with all those uh, potent spices like anger and different things of that nature because we love that passive uh, emotion like love. But but in, in, out of love, let's tell people how to save their lives and, and where, where we are. All right, wonderful. And, and I, y'all don't think data is sexy? No, well, I know you're you, 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 you're a data queen, yeah. But 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 some people out there says data is not sexy; it's kind of boring. But but these are the type of things that saves lives when we pass on good information to residents. Yeah, but we do have some good news to uh, report again. Like Dr. Reynolds said, the numbers are going down extremely low in both um, Flint and Genesee County. So. Looks like that surge has kind of started to, you know, petered out. Um, but, you know, I always warn people about is what you don't want to do is seed the next surge. You know, so I, I like this idea of, you know, Dr. Reynolds always talks about the layers of protection. Let us not forget your mind, your brain, that good common sense that the good Lord gave you. That is an important layer of protection. If you are out and you are around a lot of people, if you are at an indoor event, you, I, I will still personally um, be wearing um, my mask. But there is, like I said, good news. The numbers are very, very low um, in Flint and Genesee County this week. Last week, we had 117 cases in the county, and we had 22 confirmed cases in Flint. And the other thing is, and this is just really a testament to how well um, we've been doing in Flint, if you look, we rank all the, uh, the municipalities in Genesee County, and Flint actually had for the month of February the lowest case rate in the in the county. So of all the municipalities, Flint had the lowest um, case rate. That's really good. That means let's just um, let's stay the course. Um, it's good right now. Hospitalizations are down. Hospitals aren't overwhelmed. We want to keep it that way. Well, you know, the thing about it is that we don't want people to get too comfortable, but we need to keep on doing the things that we have been doing to get our numbers down. And we've been a model for uh, every inner city uh, community in America for closing the disparity gap with this uh, deadly virus, because this deadly virus early on attacked uh, black and brown people more so aggressively than it did others. We had a higher death rate per percentage than uh, any other nationality. Uh, but through the leadership of Dr. Furholden and Dr. Reynolds, we were able to close that gap and became a model, a leading model for the rest of America to be able to close the gaps in those despaired areas. So I want to congratulate you, Dr. Furholden and Dr. Reynolds for doing so. But I will also want to congratulate the listeners uh, and all those who participated on a positive level, pushing through this. Uh, and that is what you will refer to as a team of leaders that really recognize uh, those things that are important and life is important. But as we transition into the next important thing, you know, keeping our streets plowed, keeping them paved, keeping uh, things in order has been John Daly, uh, who's been doing fantastic work, which uh, delivered on street sweeping again inside the city of Flint. Also uh, making sure when the snows uh, leading those men and women out there to plowing uh, on the streets. And now we're engaging new activity 
Uh, we're, we're having pothole patching and other activities. John, go, uh, go ahead and tell the listeners where we are. Well, we're transitioning into uh, spring operations, getting ready to, which is a cleanup uh, from the winter. And we've also entered pothole uh, season. And this is when they start popping up like mushrooms. And that's what we're encountering right now is that the roadbed underneath a lot, many of our roads is starting to thaw. And when it does uh, do that, then we start getting potholes that will pop up, will, uh, pop up and have to be repaired. So if you have a pothole that, show, that shows up, and particularly on your local streets, uh, is where we need reporting, you can report that at 810-766-7343. Again, 810 810- Seven six six seven three four three. What was the, what, what's that number? One more time, John. Remember, one more time. Okay, it's, it's at the bottom. Of, yep. Go ahead, John. Eight one zero seven six six seven three four three. Okay, and that's for pothole. Uh, you know, this is the time of year now. This this the snow the snow the snow. I'm sorry, the snow is thawing. Our roads need work, but we need to know where these potholes are. Uh, and so, if you see a pothole. Please feel free to report it at 766-7343, and then we'll get crews there. They're out there trying to put cold patches or whatever we're doing right now. John, are we doing cold patches, hot patches, or what are we doing? We're doing cold patch right now because the uh, asphalt plants haven't opened. And when we get a complaint on a pothole, the first thing we'll do is take a look. Is we'll send a supervisor, a foreman out to take a look at it and make an assessment. Is this a, is this something that we can uh, patch or repair as part of the normal road pro- process and schedule accordingly, or is this something we need to be doing like right now? It's an immediate hazard. So uh, keep, you know, and we really depend upon the public to let us know where those potholes are, because frankly, we have 506 miles of streets in the city, and that's actual mileage, not lane miles. And we have 27 people that really work street maintenance. And right. so if they can do the math and you can see that if, if we did that, everybody would be looking at over 20 miles of streets every day. So we really depend on the public to make give us notice where the potholes are. Yeah. And, and so when we, um, we look at that, um, John, you guys have been doing a fantastic job. You know, I want to commend uh, your, you and your team because not only that traffic engineering, uh, if you have a down, uh, you know, traffic signal, please report it at that same number, uh, 766 uh, 73, um, I'm sorry, what's that number? 766 7343. 7343, 7343 the last numbers. 766 7343. If you, if you have traffic signals, it's out pothole reporting, but we can only do it as a team. And, we, you know, working together as a community, working together as one Flint, one Flint for a better Flint is what we need to do. And, John, uh, you know, thank you for the great work. Now, also in the collaboration and partnerships, uh, John, we're going to start installing the speed humps uh, that we purchased uh, and we identified through the efforts of Chief Green and his law enforcement officers uh, where people have been drag racing. We will try to put in stiffer ordinances for those individuals that's engaging in nefarious activities with motor vehicles, uh, dirt bikes, snowmobiles, cars. Uh, we will be aggressively uh, snatching those things this summer. We will not have our residents in our residential areas terrorized uh, any longer, but speed humps, John, speed humps installation. We'll start, we'll be starting speed hump installation on local streets at selected locations that have been identified by the police department uh, starting the latter part of this coming week. So you can expect to see them up. And of course there will be a warning sign that will accompany them that says, that there's a speed bump ahead. Right, and so that is something that we, we, we have a structural organization that has framed up on improving the quality of life for residents. It's a structure that is put in place, making sure all dollars are identified to be able to go to the benefit and the improvement of the quality of life of residents. That's what we have done here. And now that's why we're set and queued and ready to move forward with the installation of speed humps with transportation department working in conjunction with our law enforcement department, Chief Terry Green, uh, a Flintstone from the day he was born, 
uh, he, he calls it over there off of Bishop Avenue. Uh, I, I caught that on the rich side of the elementary school in which we grew up in the same neighborhood. And he and I are still living in the same neighborhood uh, right here in the middle of the city of Flint. Uh, Chief Green, uh, how's things going with law enforcement? I know you have a lot of happy law enforcement officers uh, this, this week. Yeah, it's, it's going very well. We're seeing a uh, decrease in part one violent crime. Also, morale is improved. Um, basically, this has been a concerted effort between your administration, Flint City Council, um, us all working together to um, improve the quality of life of the citizens of the city of Flint. Right, and we've done. We, we're moving toward, uh, you know, all the many stations. We have four many stations up and activated. Uh, we renovated a couple many stations. We have volunteers, uh, trained volunteers, uh, to be able to engage the process of local policing. And we have crime watch organizations in which we put up uh, a, a few, uh, you know, last year. And so I see a, a picture on our screen yard of some of the guns that we have confiscated. Uh, your officers are confiscating illegal weapons and taking them off the street. And we can assure people. Uh, now, when we confiscate a weapon and take it off the street and take it out uh, of the hands of those that can use it for harm, uh, we destroy those weapons. Uh, previously, those weapons were, were recirculated and put back into circulation, which showed a, a lack of critical thinking. And, uh, you know, when you put take a weapon off the street, then put it back into circulation doesn't make much sense. So de facto making a municipality uh, arms dealer uh, under your watch, Chief Green, you have taken uh, hundreds of guns off the street. Um, and we're destroying them. And your law enforcement officers, we got a new a new crop and we got more officers coming on board. Is that correct? Yes, we've been very successful in recruiting and um, getting officers from other local police departments transferring from those departments to our department. So it's still a work in progress. We still have a lot of work to do. But uh, as far as recruiting and retention of officers, it's going very well. Right. And also, when you say part one crime is down, uh, people like myself uh, and, and Pastor Pettigrew, we don't know exactly what part one means. Right. So what is part one crime? Uh, those are your most um, your violent crimes, basically violent crimes, assaults, uh, things of that nature. OK. And, and that's wonderful. But we all have to be a part of our crime watch. And if you want to be a part of our crime watch, uh, organizations, please stop into one of the many stations, sign up to get your information cards about how we can engage. Now, sometimes, you know, Chief Green, is, I know this to be true because I get these phone calls. When we're engaging in law enforcement activity, sometimes people try to cut corners and then cause, call us directly to try to get out of whatever criminal activity or illegal activity uh, from very passive engagements to very aggressive engagements, they call, but we we engage uh, with an equitable level of, of law enforcement to make sure residents in this community are safe. We don't cut corners. So passive crime, uh, major crime, we are engaging and making our community better for all of us. And so please stop calling us to try to get out of something uh, when you know that you have been engaged in some wrongdoing. Is, is that pretty accurate, Chief? Yes. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, Chief Green and I go way, way back uh, to pre-K together, uh, growing up and going through uh, elementary, junior high and high school together. Uh, but he has a long record of law enforcement engagement and activities. And so, you know, with that, you know, I want to say thank you, Chief Green. And I know your law enforcement officers. Thank you. We uh, recognize them with hero pay. And, and Dr. Froden, if we can go back to a full screen on me uh, for the screen yard uh, viewers, that'd be great. And so, Chief Green, is there any information that you want to pass on to uh, uh, people this summer? Because we know we have a it's a no snitch mentality amongst people, but you should be able to uh, uh, go to people and ask them for information to help reduce crime in the community. How can they partner with you better? Well, let's continue um, to do all the efforts that uh, the positive efforts we made this past year. Uh, we bridge that gap between the community and the police department. Um, the, the, the number one goal is to gain the community's trust. Without their trust, they won't provide us any information in order to prevent crime and also solve crime. But the most important component of that is pre prevention of crime. So we, we want to continue to bridge that gap, build that trust, and let the um, community know that they can call us and depend on us. All we need is the information. Right. 
And, you know, one of the things that, you know, right now we engage this time, spring cleaning is up on amongst us. When people come to clean out your garage or your attic and you pay them to take debris away from your homes, please make sure they take it to the dump. You know, we have a, a, a dump here. Uh, Mr. Daly, is our local dump uh, up and operational with our new garbage provider? John? Yes, it is. What is the location of that area? Do you know offhand? I, I don't know offhand. It okay. just came up on uh, this past uh, available this during this past month. And so I haven't had a chance to really check into that. Right. What we've done with our new garbage provider, Priority Waste Collecting, they have uh, agreed to be able to put a local dumping site uh, where we can take debris uh, to that site and not put it on a lightly inhabited street. One of the things that we talk about blight, we cleaned up a lot of blight, more blight than uh, than has been cleaned up previously. And But people dumping in the garbage and debris in our community, that is the real violation. We will be cracking down harder, but we need you to report. We are offering rewards anywhere from $250 to $2,000 to report and for the uh, arrest and conviction of those are dumping illegally in our community. You can dial 1-800-247-JAIL uh, to report that to Crime Stoppers, and we will pay for information for those who will treat our community as a garbage can. We clean up, and we do a good job at cleaning up, but when people continuously dump in our community, they disrespect you, me, our city, our family, and everyone. Don't allow them to treat our community as a garbage can. Now we have provided an area for them to be able to take their debris and, uh, and dump it there. But when you pay people, don't be accessory to the crime before the fact. Um, don't pay someone to take the debris away from your home, your garbage, and then they'll take it and dump it somewhere. Make sure they take it to a dumping site uh, or making sure that they do the job legitimately. We got a couple more minutes and I want to give a couple announcements uh, for activities that we have going. Uh, celebrating Mothers, something that State Representative Cynthia Neely and I do in memory of our mothers uh, with the loss of our mothers in the latter part of last year, that we're taking mothers out and celebrating them. Our next one is, is going to be March 19th at the Flint Development Center, formerly Bunch Elementary, where Chief Green and I received our, our, our young education there, where he fell in love with policing and I fell in love with uh, I don't know what I fell in love with then, but, but, you know, I was in elementary school, but Chief Green was a patrol boy, so he was uh, active in this. But it's got Flint Development Center on Martin Luther King, formerly Bunch Elementary, March 19th uh, from the hours of 1030 uh, to 1230. We'll be celebrating mothers. If you have a mother that may be wanting to engage that, please call the number. Let me give the number. The number is area code 810 Three nine three six. Once again, eight one zero four five eight three nine three six for that. Also, March 29th, Mark this down. Uh, in the city of Flint, in 1966, the first African American mayor was elected. Uh, he was the first African American mayor to the to a major metropolitan city anywhere in our nation. Floyd J. McCree. Statues go up and down our uh, Saginaw corridor, Saginaw Street corridor of many greats that has started the manufacturing uh, industry uh, when we talk about manufacturing and, and industry north. Uh, but Floyd J. McCree, we have commissioned a statue of him to be placed right here in front of City Hall. This will be the first African-American statue placed uh, uh, here in the city of Flint. But his, the measurements of the work that he's done for this community and uh, for America, uh, and he had a great quote saying that he would never live an equal opportunity lie. And so we have that March 28th, right here at City Hall at 2 p.m., the unveiling of the Floyd J. McCree statue. Also, we want to continue to make sure that we continue working with the St. John Neighborhood Committee, which they have completed their plan, the draft plan, about how to revitalize that area. We've been putting this structure together for some time. This is not knee-jerk reactions because it takes a very long time to get a statue made, built. St. John's, they've been working at this for a very long time. Uh, and we're working on that to revitalize a deconstructed community through intimate domain when the highway, highway came through in 1973. But I want to put up a quote from uh, Booker T. Washington. Uh, for you guys to digest when you are getting ready to listen to all the stuff that's going on. If we can get that Booker T. Washington quote up, I can read it for you. And it says, a lie does not become the truth. Wrong does not become uh, right. And evil does not become just because it's accepted by the majority. I'll read that again. A lie doesn't become truth. 
Wrong doesn't become right. And evil doesn't become good just because it's accepted by the majority. And that was from uh, a historian, Booker T. Washington. And that is a, motiv- uh, a meditational moment to think about that because we have work to do as one Flint. And I wanna thank our guests today, Dr. Furhold and Dr. Reynolds, uh, John Daly and Chief Green. Thank you guys, God bless, and go out and do something great for one another, one Flint. It's about vision, not vengeance. God bless you guys. Thank you, WFLT, for letting us join you. And uh, I love you, Mom. We thank you for tuning in to the Community Update Brock. Thanks, guys. Uh, you guys.